This is my ranking of every Mario Party 2 minigame. As always, it's only my opinion and no one else's. And yes, concept is still important, as well as difficulty level and replayability. Also, the dual minigames don't count, and returning Mario Party 1 minigames do count. The rules are set, so let's a go. The worst Mario Party 2 minigame is a tie between Free For All's Day at the Races and Bowser's Big Blast. I'm sure you all saw these coming. These are probably two of the most infamous minigames in the entire Mario Party series. In Day at the Races, each player must pick an enemy to race on a track, and the player whose enemy wins the race wins the minigame, while in Bowser's Big Blast, players take turns pressing plungers, hoping the one they pick won't detonate the huge Bowser bomb, and the last player standing wins. Obviously, these minigames are both completely luck-based, which, again, I despise. You'd better get used to hearing that. In both these minigames, you just pick some and pray for the best. That's it. No skill required at all. But there's actually something that makes them worse than a lot of other luck-based minigames. They're battle minigames, which means each player must wager a certain amount of their coins. And the better you do in the minigame, the more of those total coins you win back. So basically, these minigames could turn a whole board around in one fell swoop, with nothing to thank for it but pure dumb luck. Or lack thereof. But I'll speak bluntly, even if these weren't battle minigames, they'd definitely still be my least favorite minigames in Mario Party 2. They're trash. Cheap, bullcrap, luck-based trash. The six item minigames. In my opinion, you shouldn't have to play a minigame just to get an item. That's what shops and special spaces are for. And not to mention, they're all very short and solo. And I've made it clear before that short minigames aren't likely to stand out. And also, they're more fun when there are more players. The more, the merrier, as I always say. A few of these minigames are a little fun. Specifically, roll out the barrels and coffin congestion, but the rest are either meh or bad. And not to mention, some of them involve luck. So these minigames never had a chance to begin with. I don't hate them, per se. Well, at least not all of them. But if they didn't exist, Mario Party 2 would still be the same game it is today. 51. Rainbow Run. This one is exactly like Tightrope Treachery from Mario Party 1. The lone players walking on a, hence the name, Rainbow, and the team players, each with their own little cannon cloud, must shoot cannonballs at the lone player in an attempt to make him slash her fall off before he or she reaches the finish line. However, he or she has the most generous time limit in the world, and though the team controls were slightly improved, it's still hard for the team players to aim their shots. If you get this minigame on a board and you're the lone player, congratulations, you pretty much automatically win 10 coins. 50 Toad in the Box. Each player has their own block, which they must hit at the right time to get a Toad. The first player to do so five times wins. However, the block speeds up with each hit, and if you get an enemy, you'll get stunned. Timing the hit is pretty easy for the first three rolls, but from the fourth on, it pretty much becomes a game of luck. I mean, just look how fast it's going. If this minigame didn't come down to luck at the end, it wouldn't be that bad. 49. Speed Hockey. I see this one as mini air hockey. There's a Koopa Shell, which you must keep hitting, trying to get it in the other team's goal. The first team to score three goals wins. I will say, I love this minigame's concept, but in my opinion, that's the only good thing about it. The shell gets faster and faster with each hit, and it can speed up so much that it basically turns into a luck-based game, and that takes all the fun out of it for me, great concept or not. 48. Tipsy Tourney. Each player has their own covered grid with a Koopa Shell, and they must run around on it to clear out the covering tiles and reveal a picture. The first player to completely uncover their picture wins. There's not much to this minigame. Game. It's just nice and simple, and a little fun, I guess? And that's all I got. This one's just decent. That's all I can say. Again. 47. Dizzy Dancing. Think musical mushroom from Mario Party 1, only with altered controls, which, of course, make it harder for you to move around. The first player to get the floating music note wins, and you can also attack your opponents, making this a fighting minigame. This all makes for an awesome minigame. Or at least, it would, if it weren't so damn short. 46. Slot Car Derby. All four players are racing on a racetrack, and must drive by holding the joystick down. However, when turning, they have to let go of the joystick, since going too fast on turns causes you to spin out, which will make it easy for the other players to pass you. Constantly having to tilt and release the joystick feels kind of awkward, and even disregarding that, the controls are also really simplistic. I will say, it's a little better than the Mario Party 1 version, because there are more courses now, but the minigame still sucks. 45. The Bomb Barrage. The lone player is riding a raft in a pond, and must move it around to avoid the bombs thrown by the team players. Said team players must throw the bombs by tilting and releasing the joystick. However, this is where we hit our problem. To aim their throws, they must tilt the joystick back to a certain degree, and there's no indication of where the bomb will end up before they throw it, which makes this minigame for the team feel like a luck-based one. It also doesn't help that the shots sometimes feel inconsistent. The same tilt input could have a different shot output. 44. Bumper Balloon Cars. This minigame requires players to drive in little cars. Each player must try and pop all the other players' balloons, while at the same time protecting their own. While there's nothing wrong with this minigame's concept, the controls have you using just the joystick to move, as opposed to the conventional method of using a button to accelerate and the joystick to turn. Using just the joystick feels quite awkward, and therefore, I often struggle when I have to play this one. 
43. Sneak and snore. Each player in their own barrel must hit a switch to open their doors, then walk out. However, don't go too fast, because if you do, it'll take you a long time to stop moving and hide in your barrel, which is the only way to protect yourself from the sleeping chain shop. It'll keep waking up, and if you aren't completely inside your barrel when it does, it'll catch you, which means you lose. I'm not really a fan of games where you must restrict your movement, and that's pretty much the only way to win this minigame, but it does have a clever concept. That can't be denied. 42. Crane Game. The team players are plush dolls, and the lone player, using a crane, must grab them one by one and drop them into the pipe, being careful to maintain their grasp, since the team players can try to wiggle free. If the lone player succeeds in catching all three team players before time expires, they win, but if not, the team wins. This is way better than Mario Party 1's Crane Game, because it's a legitimate 1v3 now. I also like how there are now timers that the lone player can use to give themselves more time. Quite the improvement. 41. Crazy Cutters. Each player has their own jackhammer, which they must use to cut fossilized enemies out of the ground. The more accurately you cut, the more points you'll score, and the player with the most points wins. In my opinion, this version of Crazy Cutters beats Mario Party 1's, because now, instead of having to score a certain amount of points to win, only the player with the most points wins, meaning it's much less likely for it to be a tie. 40. Breaking them in. There's a spinning log with tons of mushrooms, and the players, using huge mechanical arms, must rake as many of them as they can into their baskets to score points. Well, except the purple ones, those take points. The player with the most points when time expires, or when there's no mushrooms left, whichever comes first, wins. This minigame is kind of in the middle of the road for me. I don't like or dislike it, I'm just indifferent. 39. Quicksand Cash. This one takes place in a quicksand whirlpool, into which coins will keep falling. The lone player, wearing a huge Bowser suit, can change the whirlpool's spin direction, making it harder for team players to get coins. Any coins they miss will go to the lone player, and if any team players get too close to the center, they'll sink, which means they're done. This one's not super duper fun, but it has a really unique and clever concept for a coin cache. 38. Archer Rival. The lone player, with the bow and arrows, must try and shoot all three team players moving signs. If they can do so before time expires, they win, but if not, the team wins. This one's just nice and simple, and when it comes to Mario Party minigames, there's nothing wrong with that. It's also surprisingly fun for the lone player, and surprisingly thrilling for the team. 37. Tile Driver. Each player has their own tile puzzle, on which they must keep ground pounding until they complete a picture of a certain enemy. The first player to do so wins. Again, this one's just nice and simple, and therefore fun. Sorry, I don't have anything else to say. Some minigames are just good for a few or even one simple reason, and this one is a perfect example of that. Insert time-killing joker pun here. 36. Totem Pole Pound. Each player is standing atop a totem pole, which they must keep ground pounding until they're completely underground. The first player to do so wins. In a way, this one is kind of like a slightly better version of Tile Driver because it requires good timing. How, you may ask? If you ground pound at the apex of your jump, you'll bury the pole faster. And it's also, again, nice and simple. Simple as that. Simply fun. What am I, a simpleton? 35. Magnet Carta. Just like in Bumper Balloon Cars, this minigame has you driving a little car. Yes, with the same controls. Each team, using magnets, must grab coins and drop them into their pit. I still loathe the sucky joystick-only controls, but here, they're not quite as bad because now you have a set direction to go in. And not to mention, it also takes good teamwork. I do like this minigame, but I'm sure I'd like it a lot more if not for the controls. 34. Mecha Marathon. Each player has their own toy fly guy, which by button mashing, they must wind up as fast as they can. The player whose fly guy flies the furthest wins. This one's concept is pretty neat. Also, for a button mashing game, it's unique since you have to mash two buttons simultaneously, which is unlike a lot of other ones where you just mash one button or alternate between two. And guess what else? It's nice and simple. Are you getting sick of hearing that word? 33. Shock Drop or Roll. The team players are running on a turbine, which the lone player must repeatedly change the direction of its spin to try and make them fall off. If even one team player is still standing when time expires, the team wins. If not, the lone player wins. This one is quite fun, and, for the team, thrilling, nerve-wracking, and on toe-keeping with a pretty epic concept. Shocking, isn't it? 32. Balloon Burst. Each team has their own Bowser balloon, which they must keep inflating with pumps until they burst. The first team to pop their balloon wins. This one is nice and simple, but at the same time, frantic and very fun. It doesn't have much in terms of concept, since, you know, you're just inflating a balloon until it pops. But with how chaotic it is, that's no sweat. And I think this version of Balloon Burst is a little better than Mario Party 1's, because it requires teamwork. 31. Driver's Ed. Just like in Bumper Balloon Cars and Magnet Carta, this minigame has you driving a little car, and sadly you're stuck with the same sucky controls. You have to drive through cones in the right order before crossing the finish line, aiming for a new record. I still hate how you can only use the joystick, but in this one, you're all by yourself, and you have a lot more space, both of which make it a bit more bearable. AKA, the reason it beats Bumper Balloon Cars and Magnet Carta. 30. Lava Tile Isle. The players are standing atop seven grindles over lava. The players must try to punch each other into the lava, and if you fall into it, you lose. But it's not quite that simple. The grindles will keep moving around, which will make it harder for you to keep your footing. I'm a huge fan of fighting games and throw in twists like unstable platforming, and you've got yourself one badass minigame. And the concept? Unequivocally epic. 
29. Grab bag. Each player has their own bag, I think, full of mushrooms. They have to try to get behind opponents and grab and shake their bags to steal their mushrooms. The player with the most mushrooms when time expires wins. This version of grab bag is much better than Mario Party 1's, since it no longer has such a big, direct effect on boards. In other words, it's more fair. And still, I love the concept. Good fix, Nintendo. 28. Roll Call. Each player must count how many of a certain character there are on screen, being careful not to fall for decoys. Any player to guess the right number, or if no one gets it right, whoever comes the closest, wins. This one requires you to pay close attention, and can even be challenging at times. I also like how there are different versions with different characters with different types of decoys. What's the difference between Hackneyed and Platitudinous? And side note, the Babam version's my favorite one. 27. Honeycomb Havoc. Players take turns hitting a numbered block to make fruits fall out of a tree, trying their best not to get stuck with a beehive. God damn those f***ing bees! All those bees! F Any player who does get a beehive loses, and the last player standing wins. This one, although a bit luck-based, requires strategy and close attention, which are two things I love seeing in video games, especially simultaneously. 26. Toad Bandstand. Basically, this minigame is a 2v2 version of Mario Bandstand for Mario Party 1. Each player has their own instrument, which they must play in sync with Toad's conducting. The team to hit the most overall notes with the best timing wins. This minigame is miles better than Mario Bandstand because, in addition to good timing, it also requires good teamwork. Well, more or less. 25. Cake Factory. The teams must make cakes by, with good timing, grabbing the ingredients, then placing them on the plate in the correct order. The team to make the most cakes before time expires wins. That's all there is to it. I don't really know why, but I find this one very fun, and it requires teammates to work in good sync. And the concept is not bad, but not special either. And side note, I personally prefer to be the one grabbing the cakes. 24. Looney Lumberjacks. Each team is sawing a stump off a log, and the first team to do so wins. But it's not quite so simple. You have to have very good timing in accordance with your teammates, for if you don't, you won't saw as fast. That's why I have it this high. I love how it requires such good teamwork. It's also nice and simple. I know it's kinda short, and the concept is nothing special, but with how fun and, uh, teamworky it is, I'm Looney for Looney Lumberjacks. 23. Hot Rope Jump. All four players must keep jumping over a jump rope made out of lava bubbles. Any player to get hit by a lava bubble loses, and the last one standing wins. This is another nice and simple one, but is funner and more thrilling, nerve-wracking, and challenging, especially when the rope speeds up. And it also beats Hot Rope Jump from Mario Party 1 because it's infinite now. Another good improvement. 22. Move to the music. Again, this one is like Toad Bandstand, and by extension Mario Bandstand, except it's a 1v3. The lone player must perform dance moves, and the team players have to memorize said moves, then dance them out themselves. Failing to do so means they're out, and if at least one of them is still standing after two rounds, they win, but if not, the lone player wins. I prefer this to Toad Bandstand, and Mario Bandstand, because it requires good timing, good teamwork, well, for the team, and good memory, for the team. 21. Deep Sea Salvage. This one is kind of like Hammer Drop from Mario Party 1 watered down. Pun may be intended. The players are underwater, each with their own submarine, and a hammer bro will keep throwing coins in the water, as well as... Not hammers, but spiky balls. First Lakitu, and now Spike? Overly ambitious, aren't we, Hammer Bro? As far as coin caches go, at least, this one is really fun, with an epic concept. Also, it can be a good challenge. 20. Facelift. An altered model of one of the six playable characters' faces will be shown, and each player must alter the facial features of their own model to try and match the given one. The player whose model looks the most like the given one wins. This one is just plain fun, with a funny, clever, and original concept. And it beats Mario Party 1's facelift by a long shot, since there's more than just one face to lift. And side note, my favorite face to lift, or I guess in this case, hair, is Peaches. 19. Abandoned Ship. This minigame is, simply put, Mario meets Titanic. The players are on a sinking ship, and each must climb up a mast, being careful to avoid wooden poles and cheap cheeps. The first player to reach the top of their mast wins. Concept, unoriginal, maybe, but nonetheless epic, and it's also really fun, intense, and especially challenging. Sometimes a bit too challenging, actually. 18. Dungeon Dash. This minigame is basically Desert Dash from Mario Party 1 with a fresh coat of paint. Skis donned, each team must move their connected legs in unison to proceed along the path, being careful to avoid the thwomp and lava bubbles. The first team to make it out of the dungeon wins. This one's a nice and simple race, and for some reason, just plain fun and requires teamwork, which are all things that I hate. Yep, totally, totally hate. 17. Shy Guy says. The players are floating in the air with balloons, and each have two flags. The nearby Shy Guy will hold up one or both of his own flags, and the players have to hold up the flag or flags that match the color of Shy Guy's. If you fail to do so, Shy Guy will pop your balloon, and the last player standing wins. This one takes razor-sharp focus and reflexes, especially as it progresses, since it, in doing so, speeds up. And you know what that means, good challenge. I also like how Lakidu can help you out. 
16. Bumper balls. All four players are rolling on balls, which they must use to run into and knock opponents over the edge. The last player stand rolling wins. This one is nice and simple and can even be thrilling, but it almost always tends to end in a tie. However, not as much as in Mario Party 1, because now there are three different stages, each with different terrain. My personal favorite is the ice one, so needless to say, Mario Party 2's bumper balls is far superior. 15. Platform Peril. Come on, you know how this one goes. You're jumping across a long sky course full of moving platforms. If you fall even once, you lose, and if you reach the finish line first, you win. Come on, you know how I must feel about this one. Nice and simple, yet still on toe-keeping and nerve-wracking, or more simply put, very fun. And it also beats Mario Party 1's Platform Peril, because now some of the platforms move around and convey... your belt? Is there a verb for that? 14. Hot the bomb All four players stand in a square, and must pass a lip of bomb back and forth to one another. Any player holding it when it blows up is eliminated, and the last player standing wins. This one is also fun and nerve-wracking with a clever concept, and beats the Mario Party 1 version due to there now only being one winner instead of three. That's what Mario Party's supposed to be about. I really don't get why so many people like Mario Party 1 more than two. 13. Torpedo Targets Each team has their own submarine, and one player must drive it around, while the other shoots torpedoes trying to hit targets. Each hit target is worth one point, and the team with the most points when time expires wins. Talk about a really awesome, clever concept! Also, I love how the players shooting torpedoes can, after they fire them, move them around with the joystick, making it much easier to hit targets. If you ask me, this minigame is very underrated. 12. Look away. The players, uh, disembodied heads, are dancing, and every time the music stops, they must look in one of five directions. If any of the team players end up looking in the same direction as the lone player, they're out. And if the lone player can oust all three team players in five rounds, they win, but if they can't, the team wins. This one has a really unique concept. It's also kind of funny, and the minigame itself is nerve-wracking, whimsical, and really fun. 11. Bowl over. The team players are bowling pins, and the lone player's got a Koopa shell, which he or she must throw, trying to hit as many bowling pins as possible. If the lone player can hit all three team players in two throws, they win, but if not, the team wins. I feel like the lone player has a bit of an unfair advantage, but even so, I still find it really fun and nerve-wracking. I also love the unique and funny concepts, and also, this version beats the Mario Party 1 version because it's a proper 1v3 now. 10. Skateboard Scamper. All four players are skateboarding through a mansion with a giant boo chasing them. The floor can also pop up, forcing players to keep jumping. The first player to reach the finish line wins. Try and guess how I feel about this one. I mean, it is a racing game, and I praised it in my Mario Party 1 video. It's fun, thrilling, on toe-keeping, and the concept? Epic. It does kind of suck how, even if everyone appears to be tied, it's impossible for the minigame to end in a tie, but no big thing. 9. Handcar Havoc Both teams must pump their handcars as fast as they can and turn to avoid falling off the track, because if they do, they lose right there, all to reach the finish line before the other team. The team that does so wins. To duh or not to duh, that is the duh, I love racing games. I also love button mashing ones. It's not challenging per se, maybe just a bit tiring, but with how incredibly fun it is, that matters not. 8. Shell Shocked. Each player has their own shell tank, which they must use to fire cannonballs at opponents. If you get hit twice, you're out, and the last player standing wins. I'm pretty sure this goes without saying, but this minigame's concept is badass. I mean, a free-for-all tank fight? Come on! I also love how you can lob shot, strafe, and, best of all, use pipes for cover. Well, that really only works on the third stage, but sometimes it's better than never. 7. Lights Out. This minigame can be seen as an alternate, and, in my opinion, better, version of Coin Block Bash from Mario Party 1. The lone player's got a hammer, and, of course, must try to hit all three team players with it. If they do so before time expires, they win, but if not, the team wins. But wait, there's more to it. Each team player is holding a light bulb, and the main light will intermittently turn off, then turn back on, making it harder for the lone player to see where he or she is. As if bashing players with hammers wasn't fun enough, the light gimmick makes it oh so epic. 6. Bombs away. The players are on a small island, and must run and jump to avoid the cannonballs and bullet bills being shot at them by Bowser's battleship. Failing to do so results in elimination, and any player to outlast their opponents or the timer wins. This one is really fun, thrilling, and on toe-keeping, with an epic concept. It's also a pretty good challenge, since you don't have a lot of space, and if you get bombed even once, you're done. No second chances. I also love how you can mess with your opponents by stomping on their heads, and this version beats Mario Party 1's, since at the 25 second mark you'll have to deal with a huge Bowser bill. 5. Bobsled Run Each team has their own bobsled, which they must race across a long, icy track. The first team to reach the finish line wins. But it's not quite that simple. Some parts of the track don't have boundaries, which means you could fall off, which means you lose. No second chances. In simpler terms, this minigame is a good challenge. There are also dash panels, which, if you touch, will give you a speed boost. And there's a small, tiny chance I could be wrong about this, but last I checked, I'm pretty sure I love racing games. 4. Destruction Duet Each team has their own Bowser statue, which they must keep punching, kicking, and or ground pounding until it breaks. The first team to do so wins. Let's get the duh out of the way. This minigame's concept is unique and awesome as all hell. And a few more duhs, I love fighting games and getting to smash stuff. This is another one that, in my opinion, is really underrated. Just imagine this minigame in a modern Mario Party, and it'd be epic! 
Three, belay relay. The players are penguins. Uh, okay. And must waddle along to an igloo and deliver a fish. If the lone player does so first, they win. But if the team's anchor does, the team wins. But there are a few wins and outs. If you waddle too fast, you could fall down. And there are also snowmen who will throw snowballs. Which, of course, you want to avoid. With all that, this minigame is really fun. The concept may be kind of weird, but it's at least unique. And racing games. Oh, God, I hate those things. Hate them so much. On opposite day... 2. Hexagon Heat Or, more simply put, Mushroom Mix-Up from Mario Party 1 with a fresh coat of paint. The players are standing atop seven hexagonal platforms, each with a different color. The nearby toad will hold up a sign, and the players must get on the platform that matches said sign's color, since all the other platforms are lower into the lava. Any player who fails to do so will fall in the lava and lose, and the last player standing is the winner. Players can jump and ground pound, making it easier for them to get and stay on the designated platforms. And like in Bombs Away, it also allows you to mess with your opponents. Also, as the minigame progresses, the platforms speed up, making things harder, more fun, and more on toe keeping. 1. Sky Pilots Each team has their own airplane, which they must fly through a long track in the sky. One player moves it around, while the other flaps the wings to keep it aloft. The first team to reach the finish line is the winner. However, it's not so simple. The track has some obstacles, such as towers, cannons, and Bowser balloons, and the latter two will knock players they hit back. There are also rainbow rings, which will give players a speed boost. Side note, when I play this minigame, I have to be the flyer. I despise being the flapper, since that job's both boring and tedious. This minigame is very fun, and... Sorry, that's it. It's just really fun, if you're the flyer. Also, racing game. Yeah. So, Sky Pilot is easily my number one favorite Mario Party 2 minigame. So there you have it. My ranking of every Mario Party 2 minigame. For more videos like this, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also, please check out my social media. All links are in the description. A double thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Mikoro out.